action. When you take a 50% of the labor force, that means there's a whole bunch of men out here who ain't making the same amount of money as they would have in a previous generation. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so in a previous generation, they would have took they, they labor, their money, their earnings, and they would have went and got a mediocre house and had a mediocre bra. Yeah. This is a fact. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. now women be like, I don't want no mediocre ass nothing. I'd rather be by myself. <laughs> There's so many variables, but we're going to talk about a couple of them. One of them is that uh, women aren't getting treated very nicely. Ooh. I would be more likely to be in my place if I whoa, was whoa. treated nicely. When you say your place, you mean your human position? My human position as a feminine. As a feminine. We have these conversations about feminine, <clears throat> masculine, all these terminologies, right? Yeah. Man, we ain't got to complicate the thing that already exists, yeah? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can look and see danger, yeah? Right. If I look and see a big-ass lion and I, don't, and, I, and I choose not to acknowledge the fact that shit is a lion, <laughs> then that's me being silly, okay? Okay. Yeah. Every woman, when it comes to safety, when she sees a man, she knows that her safety can be jeopardized, right? True. So she crossed the street or, or hold her purse or get her mace or whatever she needs to do because that man is a goddamn on feral animal mm-hmm. when he's in heat. <laughs> Right. When he smelled nice. the scent of that, them sweet pheromones coming from that vagine <laughs> and get there. Uh, Niggas go what? Be acting right. I'm trying to tell you, boy, motherfucker. Behave yourself. Man, I'm telling you, I just want to smell the flower. Huh? I have my face all in you. Goodness gracious. Yes, man. A natural, yeah. amazing, American, good old fashioned vagine is the most amazing thing in the whole entire world, I promise. And women love some good D. I'm just. These things are, you know. What are you willing? What is the price of some good D? You know what I'm saying. Does a good piece of uh penis does that afford a man a nice house and a washer and dryer and a nice coupe? Yeah, if he was providing in at in some facet, it doesn't always have to be financially. But you can't talk to me crazy and be like let's even let's get to that place why would any man talk to another talk to a woman crazy for any reason why mm-hmm. would any man out there talk to a woman crazy for any reason because these niggas get triggered i'll tell you what man if you ever find yourself in a situation where you get triggered this coming from a man who was married for 11 years i've yeah. had my ups and downs i fought my battle swear to goodness yes it's coming from experience uh-huh at the moment she starts to talk to you in an aggressive way mm-hmm. remove yourself from the situation and go do something different i promise i don't care what it is I ain't got no car. Man, take a walk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't got no feet. Hey, roll your wheelchair, nigga. Whatever yeah. whatever transportation you have. <laughs> no, yeah. Because nobody deserves to be... Man or woman don't deserve to be... Everybody wants to be understood. No matter what you think, no matter what you say, no matter how you feel, if a woman starts talking to you wild, there is no recourse. The only thing that you can nope. do is get out the situation as quickly as you possibly can. Run, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. Nope. I'm gone, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Deuces. And I, I've been in those situations where... I I've been so open to wanting to give an opportunity to somebody that doesn't make as much or do as much or whatever, but I'm just trying to see how they're going to feel a need. And then they talk sideways and that's just something I can't tolerate. That is, that is a wild thing. Those for those individuals, you know, like I wish that I could save every man in the whole entire universe, but men, you have to save yourself, right? Yeah. It's kind of homosexual for me to try to grab you and show you how to be a man. You got to learn how to pee on your own, boy. Mm-hmm. Goddamn, just don't pee into the wind, right? Don't get yourself pissy out here, right? Right. Treat people exactly how you want to be treated. And just because you have muscles and some strength and some bass in your voice doesn't mean that you can just act ugly with a female person. That's silly. Yeah. Yeah. People get defensive, though, right? Because people go through whatever they go through in life. And as you get older, it's like you don't know who you can trust. You don't know what type of thing people be on. So you go through this risk assessment of how do I know that I can trust you? I can only imagine. And when I said that men are out here like feral animals, Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be ugly. I mean... Like they have this testosterone and this and this primal instinct to want to dominate and to be men. Yeah, not nature. Yeah. While simultaneously, 
all of that is being sucked out and being emasculated through a screen and not having any physical responsibility. Mm. I got all these thoughts and all these emotions and all these chemicals coursing through my veins mm -hmm. and I have nowhere to play it. Right, right. Yeah. Hell, I ain't got no I ain't got no vagina to just hump on, you know? Yeah. Sheesh. That's why I, I I do believe that when people are going through a self awareness journey or when you realize you need to disattach from all the social media and be with yourself try to figure out what what you who you are and what makes you important so that you can you, i don't want to say sell yourself how do you well, market yourself market yourself like you and know like life is real like i don't care what it is you're doing right are you a person that you want to be with do you find yourself interesting do you make yourself laugh because if you don't <laughs> i promise you ain't nobody else gonna laugh at your ass yeah neither. and if not then develop that skill and then and then you'll be so dependent on another person. Codependency is is nasty, toxic mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't think that you're funny the first time you tell a joke to a girl and she laughs at your joke, you're like, you're the only person who ever laughed at me. Yeah. <laughs> and then now instead of just keep working on your jokes, you always pulling at her, like, why you ain't laughing today? Now you're trying to pedestalize <laughs> this broad and you keep telling her your bad jokes. <laughs> And all she thought she was like, man, this nigga's cute. Maybe if I laugh at his joke one time, he'll take me out for ice cream or some shit. Yeah. Listen, I will, I will hee hee ha ha on on all the bad jokes if this man is filling some needs. Okay. Hold on. Wait a minute. Hee <laughs> hee. You ain't gotta stroke no Negro's ego. You ain't gotta stroke no man's ego. Why not just tell him, hey man, it's not funny, baby. <laughs> you got this man out here looking crazy as hell. He at the family reunion. <laughs> hey, baby, baby, watch this. Watch this. Oh, okay. I mean, t there's levels to it, and to you, a certain degree. Most men, they like words of affirmation. You so. got to pretend laugh in front of granny and shit. Nah, <laughs> nah, nah. Not, not to that extent. But I'm definitely going to be like, oh, you so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and your uncle going to come and say, hey, niece, come here. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, my uncle Pee Wee has definitely, he will definitely do that. The fuck you brought over here <laughs> but i think there's just a there's a level to getting somebody to know hey you you have a your this is where your interest is let's develop that skill <laughs> hey sometimes daddies get so close to their daughter mm -hmm. that they that they forget to be a daddy you know what i'm saying they'd be mm -hmm. so worried about her little vagina getting just touched they'd be like uh -huh. super overprotective Protective, yeah respectfully every, every young woman needs an honest uncle Right. Not a not a fondling uncle, an honest uncle. Mm. Yeah. Keep the perverts at bay. Pretty Man. please. Pretty please. I'm just saying statistically speaking, when bad things yeah. happen, it's coming from someone in the family. Absolutely. I'm saying we need men to be accountable and to be just just be a decent man. Like, be of yeah. service. Goodness gracious, yeah. Yeah, be of service. Like, you were saying about sexuality. Like, it's so easy to be of service in the bedroom. Men are always at service. Women are always at service in the bedroom, but that's because they know they're going to get there, some there, off there's of some human. Oh, I thought you were saying that like they were doing a good job because there's some human people who don't know how to do a good job. Sorry, man. Well, a good job, but they're willing to be of service. I can teach you anything. <laughs> <laughs> I can, and I can work with somebody who's willing. Enthusiasm is the most beautiful thing in the whole entire planet. Oh, I'm yeah. like, man, yeah, I learned that from my daughter. Watching my daughter and her father's relationship, I learned the power of enthusiasm. How she, when he walks in the house, and she's like, oh, Daddy! And like, he'd do anything for her. And she knows that. Absolutely. And that's like a beautiful <laughs> dynamic, yeah? And yeah. to have that experience, right? Co-parenting is a very difficult thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that right now, that's a component in the sexual marketplace of dealing with people who have children. I know I have three children, three wonderful children. Yeah, yeah. And to and so whenever whenever I invite someone else into my life, I still have to I have to deal with my three children. I have to deal with my ex wife because that's the other person that I have to co parent with. Absolutely, right? y'all are a unit. Mm -hmm. Hey, on the on the factual, if mm -hmm. she's not happy, then that's going to affect my relationship with my children. It's also going to affect my children. So yeah, shit. Hey, baby mama. How can I be of service? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These are real questions on just not just being a man, but being a concerned person yeah. to add value to the people you love around you. Yes. 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 Yes.
And let's have these good, wonderful conversations so yeah. that Americans can fall in love and have babies and we can like be the <laughs> most bestest superpower in the history of the world, yeah? What stops people from being of service? Ego. Facts. Looking for reciprocity. Why would I do that for you? What'd you do for me? What are you going to do for me? What have you done for me lately? <laughs> man, if I could dance, I would dance so damn hard. You, you did. You did your jig. Oh man, that was just a little. That was just a little. Just a little, little shimmy, shimmy. A little something, something. Oh, but it's. Shit. But that's true though. It's like people will only do for you when they feel like you've done something for them. So who starts the pendulum? You like this pendulum thing? I swear I do. This idea of perpetual motion. You just, you just have to do it, and I mean, it just starts with the conversation of saying. Like the the idea is contagious, right? Right. I tell you, man. Like once you do a good job, and and you just know that you just did a good job, and you just become a craftsman. Yeah. And, and being a craftsman in like in life, right? When, mm. it come, when it comes to a woman's body to be a craftsman, mm. when it comes to your your skills to be a craftsman, just to like just take pride in your work. Yes. Oh man, that word craftsman is so triggering. Can we talk about how sexy it is when men fix something? I don't know how sexy it is when men fix things. I know. My, I know. <laughs> I love it when it doesn't have to be anything like extravagant, just like hanging a picture on the wall properly or like fixing something that I don't know that might have been misconstrued or I don't know. Having a conversation that might have been a disagreement and trying to fix that. It's sexy. Man, that idea of just adding value, being willing to do the work, right? <laughs> Yeah. To show initiative, yes. Yeah. To want to please, to aim to please, nigga, to be eager to please. It is contagious, yeah. Without being a sucker, fool. <laughs> right. Yeah, don't be like, what Kevin said, what'd you say? Yes, 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 yes. And but like, do it with excitement. <laughs> and as soon, as soon as a person doesn't appreciate your presence, then you give them the gift of distance, yes. Deuces. Yeah. You just smile and be like, hey, I did good work, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. Bet you ain't gonna be able to talk no shit about it. I hung me. that I hung that picture real nice, didn't I? Yeah, every time you look at that. I even changed your light bulbs, huh? You got that you got that good white, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You used to have them ugly ass soft <laughs> yellow motherfuckers. Can see shit. <laughs> I can see clearly that it's true. You do something with with happiness and it make it it's contagious to the point where I wanna do something for you. Changing light bulbs don't cost nothing but eleven dollars and last for about seven, eight years, right? Mm-hmm. You can make a woman smile by changing the light, yes. Yeah. You have a little step, you have a little stool and a little a screwdriver and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she just over there percolating, percolating, <laughs> percolating. Boy, I can I can smell the I can smell the wetness in the air. I'm like, damn, baby, it's damp in here, ain't it's it? It's so true. Ooh, is it me? It's so true, yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Motherfucker gotta go change the drawers and shit. You hear me? Yeah. These are honest conversations on just how to have wonderful uh, sexual experiences. Yeah. Hell yeah. Fall in love with somebody mm-hmm. <laughs> by, by being of service. Yeah, absolutely. Man, I swear to goodness, if, if you ain't got a dollar in your pocket, man, but you know how to use a screwdriver and you got clean fingernails, you know what I'm saying? You wash your mm-hmm. balls. You know Innovation. Jeez, you know, the dude. word husbandry. Hey, I need you to co-sign some of these things. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're like, yeah, you got a whole woman sitting over there. Like, do my balls need to smell good? Should should my fingernails be clean? Uh, you know? Yes. What what <laughs> what does a good manicure do, right? Right, because you, I don't, I don't want you touching my, um, you know, my yoni with your dirt underneath your fingernails. But you know what I'll do if I notice your fingernails are dirty? I'll I'll, I'll clean them for you. Holy man! I'll clean them for you. That's sexy as hell, right? Like, mm-hmm. if you've been at work all day and your hands is dirty and grimy, I don't work in some yeah. fucked up places, mm-hmm. yes? And all of a sudden, baby motherfucking soaking your shit in some uh, some, some cuticle solution yeah, and shit. Yeah, yeah. I love, I love seeing... You know how... Okay. You know how some people, like, they do things for the reaction? Okay. But I love, like, if, a, if I'm dating a guy and he's, you know, been so of service and he's just laying on... The couch, watching, whatever. I'll go get my pedicure kit. Oh, man. I, about to, I thought you were about to say that damn Aquanella song like a motherfucker. No, I just sit there like, give me your feet. Let me see your feet. And you know I that just, Aquanella song? Uh-uh, what is that? Put it in your mouth. Ah. In your mouth. <laughs> no, but I have done that. Respectfully. Right, respectfully. If a nigga is getting an attitude that was a joke. and he's talking all that shit, I've done that. I put it in my mouth. Talk all that shit with my... Whoa! With 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 
You know what I'm saying? Did I just gargle? You <laughs> did. That was, that was hella gay. <laughs> and I love being a heterosexual. <laughs> oh, my God. He, you have this thing with being gay. I don't have this thing with being gay. I mean, gay. I you have this thing about 80s, things man. that look gay. I'm just saying, double paws, yeah? <laughs> this cup used to have a straw. I was like, man, I'm not going to be yeah, no. you were right about that. wasn't a good look. You were right about that. You were right. <laughs> Optics matter. Yeah. When like, whenever you want to have an honest conversation about communication, ninety five percent of ninety five percent of communication is all nonverbal. Mm. It's body language. It's eyes. It's facial expressions. It's a shrug. It it's is. a smile. Am yeah. I forcing this smile? It's written all over your face. Yeah. And so when you start changing my objective reality and all of a mm-hmm. sudden I can't be me, right? Right, right. As soon as we can't have honest conversations about everybody has feelings, right? Indeed. But I get to control my thoughts. Right. Once I control my thoughts, I can manage my emotions. Because mm-hmm. I understand what's happening. I understand why I'm mad. And mm-hmm. hey, you said some shit that was fucked up to me, right? Right. And that shit made me hurt my feelings. Right. Let's talk about <laughs> it. Yeah. I apologize for hurting your feelings. Man, if a grown ass nigga ever come to you and say you hurt your feelings, don't you laugh at that, man. Mm-hmm. He's trying to com- he's trying to convey his emotions to you in the most if, it, if a man possible. ever did that, I would be in awe. Holy. I would never laugh at that. I'd be too much in shock. Because resentment builds in me in real quick. Because when I when you do something that you say something mean to me, mm-hmm. I can't do shit back. Right. So the only thing I think is, I man, she don't like me. It's demasculating. So how can I be a man to you when you just demasculated I'm me? Like, you really don't like me. Mm-hmm. You really don't like me. Yeah. Every time you fuck, every time you fucking make a joke about me, I'm like, she yeah. really don't like me. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And she didn't. And she didn't live this life because women get to say whatever, however. I'm generalizing, mm-hmm. but men treat treat women with kindness because they want the opportunity to have sexual intercourse. This is just how we behave. That's that's what it is. But and women will only really want to start building with you when you show attributes of being able to manage the resource. And the resource is like just being of service, right? Yeah, just. I- how do I know that you can manage me when everything else that you do looks like you haven't managed it very well? Scattered brain and clustered, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. To have an objective, to have a goal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like women, they, they say this word, they, it sounds so cryptic and shit. What, I just want a man to be ambitious. Oh, and you know, I think <coughs> what they're in the, when they think a man is ambitious, it's because he's showing that he has some type of drive and he has the skill set to manage. That's what the attraction is about ambition is like, Oh, I'm attracted to the fact that he's going after something and he has the skill set and the resourcefulness to make it happen. I think a prerequisite for ambition should be work ethic. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what the fuck? What, the, what is some ambition with no work ethic? <laughs> yeah, you, work ethic is attractive. I mean, it sounds like it's like a month. Just I'm, hey, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that and just watch, <laughs> and just watch, and just watch. I just don't like a lot of talk. It's like I love it when you know talk about it, walk it like you talk it though. You know what I mean? That's all. But we need to get to a place where we can have an, a conversation about finances. Right, motherfuckers fall in love with broke niggas and then they find out he's a broke nigga and they hate him for the rest of their life. I was with somebody and they were only getting a little bit of money. But when I seen and I didn't care about that. But when I what I seen, what they did with their money when they got it was what was unattractive. They didn't try to be innovative or resourceful with their finances at all. Like hey, being broke is traumatic. Yeah. You always in the place of defense. Mm-hmm. You always mm-hmm. feel inadequate. You know what I'm saying? Your girl tell you, damn, I just I just want a little smoothie from Smoothie King. Yeah. That motherfucker, seven nineteen, oh, dog. Damn ten dollars. Cause I'm gonna get the thirty two round. Like, holy <laughs> and she is. look at you and smile and you feel like, Hey babe, can I get fourteen dollars? Mm-hmm. And she like, I mean, I need I need uh fifteen dollars, gotta pay for the tax too, right? Right. And she look at you like, cause she hate I mean, ain't nothing more make a girl uh, she was she was so wet and damp earlier when you fixed the light. Ask mm-hmm. her for twenty dollars to Oof. buy her to buy her a drink. <laughs> dry up like a desert. But you know what I do? I set up plays like, oh yeah, here you go. No problem. No talking shit. I just want to see what you're gonna do after that. I don't. I didn't heard people say things like, "Man, what's mine is yours. You got it. We got it. I got it. We got it." 
Yeah, yeah, that shit sound good. It sound good. It's, no, I don't even play that game. I respectfully, I appreciate you. I thank you so very much. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go sell this plasma. Right. <laughs> I just want to see what you're gonna do with uh, with, with what you got. Yeah, I don't have a problem because I know I'm gonna get mine back no matter what. Fifteen dollars, no problem. But what you do with that fifteen, and then what you do with your mouth, and like it just piles on top trauma and and just having bad spending habits all this shit is just like it's 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 passed down from generation to generation and yeah. then we perpetuate the shit <laughs> we, we, we spend dollars so quick you know what i'm saying being, yeah. being broke is a traumatic experience niggas got ptsd from being poor i swear to goodness right so what should what is a woman how is the market supposed to respond to the trauma that these men are going through because they are trying to fight for their own masculinity because they feel so demasculated that now when you come across a real one and they're open-minded and willing and I got to deal with the trauma, what what should Man, I do? And you know what? And like having the conversation because I have, to, I have to be empathetic to your situation because now you're sitting over there being a light warrior, receiving all this trauma Mm-hmm. Nurturing all these baby niggas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Holy Christ, that's a lot of weight for a woman to bear. And I wouldn't ask nobody to sit there and be a therapist and a broken person. Yeah. And I think I think that's what a lot of it is going. I don't think most women don't want to be of service. I think that they're coming across a lot of men that are broken, and rightfully so. And to a certain extent, they do deserve the attention to get healed, but to what extent? Because you can't not, not to you know, the extent of you, not to the extent right. of me as a person. And I think that that's the that's the rhetoric that I think is happening is that that's what women are trying to say is I can't sacrifice myself to to pedestalize you, but mm-hmm. simultaneously, like the gift of discernment is a beautiful ass gift. Can you see what's wrong? Because if you know what's mm. wrong, you can heal it. Yeah, intuition. Yeah. There's a most there's a most wonderful book called The Art of Seduction by Robert Greene, right? Yeah. And and this ain't to manipulate people; it's to understand techniques and tactics. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, how do I approach the situation? I know that this man ain't got no money. How in the world can I massage his ego, acquiesce to him as a man, mm-hmm. and still let him know, man, I'm in a good place. We can mm-hmm. we gonna be secure together. Yeah. Learn how to be a people person. Nigga, I, I believe in you. <clears throat> I trust you. I would like you to lead, and I think you're going to do the right thing. Yeah. And there ain't no expectations. Here, go do what you need to mm-hmm. do. Yeah, you just do your best. You you plant that seed, and if it and if they don't cultivate it, then hey. Nigga, respectfully. Another one bites the dust. And if that person goes and takes that talent and grows that talent, then goddamn congratulations. Oof. You done built you a fucking man. Man, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> And if that nigga take that talent and go and trick off that talent and come uh, back and say, baby, can I have some more? Yeah. Damn. Man, I, I sure ain't got it. I ain't going to be able to do nothing with it. <laughs> I sure ain't got it. I can't even do it. I ain't, ain't going to be able to do it. Because it's a it's a market, man. It's a market. And what do you bring to the market? Do you bring work ethic? Do you bring charisma? Do you bring charm? Nigga, do, mm-hmm. do you have a sense of humor? You have a sense of humor? Bitches love to laugh. I mean, the woman is going to bring you the thing that you want. You want the Gina. Everybody loves the Gina. Mm-hmm. Man, how do you negotiate for the Gina? Huh? All you got to do is tap into what I already have naturally, and that is nurturing. I'm a natural <coughs> nurturer, like most women are. And I'm going to want to nurture something that is beautiful to me, that is loving to me. And if I feel it like it's love and it's providing this need, then... <sighs> Naturally, I'm going hey, to for, serve for, you. for young women, it's a whole nother beast out here <clears throat> because I know that you've received so much mm-hmm. validation. I know women, as soon as you, as soon as you start crossing over into that place of womanhood, yeah, man, man, <clears throat> you, as soon as your mama asks you to put on the undershirt, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can't get a bra yet, but you get an undershirt, yeah. yeah. As soon as you put on the undershirt, a nigga is whistling at whistling at you, right. cat calling and shit, doing all types of hoe ass shit. Yeah, not being a true, legitimate, authentic, wonderful man of service. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, being sure. a creep, right? Yeah. And so you've been fighting these fights, and now you got uh the phone, and you got all these social standards about about how what beauty is, and how you're supposed to present as a woman, and toxic masculinity. All these ideas just 
running through your brain. Yeah. And which path do you choose? And so many folks, they get overwhelmed where they just like, eh, I'll just disengage. Yeah. <laughs> and I want you to re-engage, man. Love is good. Yeah, don't love disengage. Is... Just learn how to be of service with boundaries. Man, That's play all. the game more better. Yeah, just go back to the drum board, analyze your game, <laughs> and build some intuition. Man, and a, a woman with a woman with conversation, a beautiful woman with conversation, mm-hmm. is like God. Duh. <laughs> yeah, and a lot, and it's like a a beautiful man that is willing. Is you know what I mean? It's just hey, holy Christ, man! You be like because everyone knows, you know, saying you might get a little bit of piece of cat, and mm-hmm. then when you get one that talk back, you say, holy Christ, this cat can talk. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, it's like yes. It's magic. All my life I've been raised to serve you. <laughs> the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.